Let's do an example where we use Bessel functions. We have a vibrating radially symmetric circular membrane and the wave equation is d square u by dt square equals 4 divided by r d by dr r du by dr. And you see this is already in polar coordinates, right? This has been transformed into polar coordinates uh, already. This is good. We have u1 t is 0. So what does this mean? This means at the radius 1, so let's draw the thing here. Let's say this is radius 1. So here the translocation on the boundary is equal to 0, which means it is a fixed membrane which is fixed on the sides. Now u at r0, this means at time 0 we have a deformation corresponding to the zero-order Bessel function. So the maybe it looks a little bit like this, so like a little indentation as if you hit it with your thumb. And then du by dt r0 is 0. This is the initial velocity, so there's no initial velocity. You can argue that if you hit a drum with your thumb or with a stick, if you give it an initial deformation, or do you give it an initial velocity? I'm not quite sure. I think actually if you use your thumb, it is relatively slow movement and you really do deform the membrane, so you give it initial deformation. And so it made me wonder if you can actually excite a drum by giving it an initial velocity. And I think you can do. You can use an initial velocity as a sound wave. And here, see this. This works. <laughs> so this works too, of course. But uh, yeah, so here we have initial velocity 0. Initial deformation is 5j0 of z3 of r and z3 denotes the third zero of j0. Okay, we use the z to denote the zeros of these special functions. How do we solve this? Well, of course, first we try separation. Also noted, this is a linear equation, it has no inhomogeneities, so uh, separation will probably work. So we have two variables, r and t, so we use a function phi of r, another function t of t, and then we do the derivatives up there. So a second time derivative only acts on t, so we get t double prime. And then this polar coordinate second derivative uh, in r only acts on the phi function. So then we get 4 divided by r, r phi prime, all this prime times t equals phi t double prime. And then we divide by 4 phi t, and then we get a separated system. On the left we get r phi prime, all prime, divided by r phi. On the right we have t double prime divided by 4t. Left depends on r, right depends on t, so all this must be equal to a constant, and by convention we call this constant minus lambda. Then we find a radial equation for r, which is given here, and we find a time equation for t, which is then given there. Okay, that's all fancy as we know it. The boundary condition will then transfer to a radial boundary condition. Phi at 1 has to be equal to 0. And then in addition, at the origin, the membrane does not explode or get a hole or anything of the sort, so phi r should be bounded there. So, then we get this sturm liouville problem here. r phi prime prime plus lambda r phi is 0 phi at 1 is 0, and phi at r is bounded, at r is equal to 0. To solve this equation, I first multiply this equation by r, and then I get r square phi double prime plus r phi prime plus lambda r square phi is equal to 0. And now the solution for this one will be Bessel functions of order 0. And to show you how this works, I need to go to another page. Our equation is r square phi double prime plus r phi prime plus lambda r square phi is equal to zero. And of course we are looking for a function phi of r. If I compare this with the Bessel equation, the Bessel equation would be x square phi double prime plus x phi prime plus x square minus lambda square phi is equal to zero. 
The unfortunate thing here is that the lambdas have different meanings, but I come to this in a second. Okay, so that's the Bessel equation of order lambda. And if you compare, the, the first term matches, the second term matches, but here we can match this with this somehow, but then the lambda has to go, so we choose lambda is equal to zero. Or often, if lambda is an integer, we also say this to be n, so then n is zero. So this is the Bessel equation of order zero, but there's still some matching to be done. So and we do this by transforming coordinates. So I introduce a new coordinate x, which is root lambda times r, and then I do differentiation. Then I need to use the chain rule, and d by dr becomes d by dx times dx by dr. And dx by dr, just according to this formula, gives you a root lambda. So then this is equal to root lambda d by dx. And this is what I apply to the very first equation here on top. Okay, so then I have r square, and now I differentiate twice with respect to r, replacing through the transformation, so then I get root lambda, which I get twice, and I have two derivatives with respect to x. And then the next term, the r remains, and then I get a root lambda d phi by dx, and the last term, lambda r square remains, phi is equal to zero. And now we are talking about a function phi which depends on x. Okay, root lambda square is lambda, so then this here is in fact x square, and this here is in fact x, and this is in fact x square. So what we get is x square phi double prime plus x phi prime plus x square phi is equal to zero. And now compared to here, this is indeed Bessel of order zero. So then we have the solution j0 of x and y0 of x. And now y0, why don't I like y0? Well, of course, because it's unbounded at zero. So this guy is not used, but j0 is used. And now I replace x with the transformation I had earlier. So then I have j0 of root lambda times r. All right, and this is the solution to the above problem. And this is exactly what I wrote here. Now we use the boundary condition. So one boundary condition is phi 1 at 0 is 0. So we sub in radius is equal to 1. Then we get Bessel function j0 at root lambda has to be 0, which means root lambda has to be one of the zeros of the Bessel function. And those zeros we enumerated as zn, n is 1, 2, 3, and so on, and so on. So meaning now we get a whole bunch of lambdas and possible solutions. So then the possible solutions are the phi n, which is the Bessel function 0, at root lambda n times r, and the lambda n is the square of the zeros zn. Solving the corresponding time problem gives us then sine and cosine. These kind of equations we have solved now many times. And you see the oscillations in time. We get a n cosine of 2 root lambda nt plus b n sine of 2 root lambda nt. Right? You have to read it the right way. So this is all brackets here. Okay. All right, and then we can use a superposition. So we multiply the Bessel function to the time function, sine and cosine, which then happens here. And then we sum over all possible lambda n's, which were the zeros of the Bessel function, and we get a general solution u. Now looking at the initial condition, if time is zero, uh, what happens? So the cosine becomes one, and the sine becomes zero, so we only keep the a n's, we don't keep the b n's, and so this happened here. And we keep the j zero, of course, as well. Initially, we were given five j zero of z three r. And then you see these guys were the z n's. 
we have to equate it to uh, only one term in a Bessel series, which has only the Z3. So here this means n has to be equal to 3. So you can see already from here that a3 is 5, that's the 5 there in front, and all other ans are 0 for all n, which are not 3. So this was very quick. For the initial velocity we got 0, and if you differentiate the above formula by t, and then sub in t is equal to 0, you get the bn's and a factor times j0 of uh, root lambda n r. And this makes all the bn's equal to 0 for all n. Hey, this was good! So then in this long series we get only a term a3, that, that's all. And then a3 is 5, we get the Bessel function with the z3 there, and then we keep the cosine which belong to the a term of 2z3t, again, there could be brackets if you like, so then this is our solution.